Hi everyone. Welcome to Gene Key of the Day. Today we are reporting from the Scorpio New Moon. So we're coming to you live from the trenches of human consciousness. There's so much goodness inside of this place and it is so hard. So let's get into the material of what this new moon is carrying forward in an archetypal sense and just some threads of intelligence that you can, you know, connect to if they feel relevant to you. So this new moon is aligning itself um, to the 14th gene key, which is in those later degrees of Scorpio. We're almost through the sun's transit through Scorpio. And of course we have uh, Jupiter and Venus also in Scorpio. So we'll get into this, but here we are, new moon in the 14th gene key. 14 moves from the shadow of compromise to the gift of competence and the city of bounteousness. And this gene key is all about fire. There is so much vital energy inside of this gene key, which I love. The synchronicity of it coming right at this time is pretty amazing for me in the contemplations that I've been having as gene key's wonderland has moved from the core the core wound in the Venus sequence into the vocation of the pearl. And that sphere has this engine, has this turn of power to it. As you light your creative service from the depths of your wounding into your greatest creative actions. So this has been a theme that if you saw the pearl webinar, you probably saw me talking about some of this. So 14, in human design, it's in the sacral center. So it is this life generating uh, gate and it connects to the G center. So there's this um, higher nature that is transforming these pure elements of sexuality and power into, their, into a higher form. And that, so it's one of the three tantric gates, clues for the journey ahead the journey now <laughs> and uh, 14 is also in the codon ring of fire and this is one of those unique just two gene keys inside of this codon ring the first gene key and the 14th and the first gene key is the primal yang energy all yang lines so we're working with a lot of fire and Richard talks a lot about summoning the fire and making fire from scratch. So when I contemplate all of this, I come into the place of, oh, how do we turn on the inner zero point engine, the free energy engine inside of our bellies to really fuel the successes, the golden bounteousness of our prosperity when uh yeah that comes from this conversion of more base elements so there's a lot of alchemy going on in this key and so today we're going to talk about these things and how to work with that engine is how to source your fuels how to find your fuel and how to use your fuel but before we get into those specifics, I also want to just keep contextualizing about the depths that Scorpio is drawing us into. And last week when we were talking about the full moon, I talked about these base notes of lower frequency, like this whole cavern of consciousness on the underbelly, uh, like dropped out and opened up for me once Jupiter entered Scorpio and we were sun and Scorpio. It's like, whoa, I've never felt this depth before. And I'm looking out and I'm looking around the world and I'm just like, whoa, we are really in this whole terrain. It's like subterranean material that we're having to really interface with. So to me, Scorpio, it's very deliberate. It's very well-timed. It's drawing us into the seat of our power, 
It's drawing us into the depths where we've like hidden and left behind our core source of power. And to me, death, sex, and creativity are all kind of like mm, one thing inside of this like zero point in the belly of the void and where we actually access our renewable resource of free energy. <sighs> but the thing is, is that to get to that source of energy that we're being drawn into and we're reclaiming, we really have to go through the the sludgiest sludge of our existence. <laughs> we have to go through the like the most thick, dense uh, places of fear and resistance that kind of like exists in our psyche. So quite a challenge that we're up for. Yet it's that true. Mm, font of our immortality <laughs> and creative wellspring of oh my god golden gifts that we have to give to the world that's inside of this journey so let us continue to forge our path so a reframe that I like to make when it comes to dealing with the sludge of our existence is that when we do so, when we dive into it, like consciously, rather than being like swept around and chaos and just like pummeled by the waves of turbulence, when we go in consciously and we claim it and we do our work inside of it, we are uncovering these secretly nested fuel sources that literally move us from poverty to prosperity that move us from non-renewable energy sources to renewable energy sources. And holy crap, I think we can all, you know, agree that that shift is monumental to our uh, capacity to prosper, thrive, be back in harmony together as a human species, as a globe, as a planet. So, question, how effective are we at finding our fuel sources and turning the substance, the thick, dense substances of our world, of our reality, into the energy needed to uh, spawn creative service and action to fuel our creativity and gifts? Well, I have this like two-step thing that obviously there's probably a lot more intricacy you could go into this. But number one is we have to meet the density. So this is part of the Scorpionic themes. We have to turn towards the uncomfortable stuff. And I know that this is like pretty consistent uh, thematic throughout the entire Gene Keys transmission, throughout any conscious shadow work, we have to meet it. But this is no joke when you're trying to break victim consciousness and get into the most wounded place inside of us. I notice that in myself there's this thick kind of layer of like shame and fear and guilt that sort of keeps me from penetrating in and just being like, oh, I meet you, oh, I turn to you, and oh, I feel you. It's like I have to battle with these places in me that are like, no, no, I don't want you to see that I did this to myself. I feel so ashamed that I'm carrying this around and I just slip around and distract and do anything to evade me really being with what needs to be been with, that needs to be met. So again, I just wanna add the like, whoa, this is huge work. Like for instance, I, um, I did the webinar with the Pearl, we talked about all this material, and then I basically got plunged into like really uncomfortable emotional 
states in my relationship, in my life, just anger and all sorts of really deep stuff started coming up. And I was watching myself flail and I was like, girl, you gotta walk your talk. What, what are you doing here? And so when I really kept grabbing in, I wanna bring this teaching uh, from my teacher, Osul, such a master in the realm of turning towards and having fangs, I love this, having the attitude of fangs with yourself, like, ah, I, I love this. There's a part of me that has done this to itself, so I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna get in there and become the wound that, you know, then like actually transcends it. So, I really had to ask myself, like, am I able to be with it? Am I able to meet this frequency inside of my physical body? And when I did, oh, it's just like immediate grace and immediate like, oh God, yes, it feels so good. So step two, once we meet it, I think that very deep and full breath cycles is really important for transmuting and using fuel. And this was brought to me by Teresa, my one of my great mentors and friends, um, who saw that I was dealing with emotional energy and I was breathing it about here and it was getting stuck. So breathing it all the way up and out my crown and recycling it back through the Taurus. So I just bring that through of really giving the physicality of these sensations of what we're uh, converting into energy, really get inside the physical sensation, the place in the body, the frequency that it's oscillating, and then breathing completely through the Taurus of our, of our being. This is some clues, some steps of how to really work our zero point energies well and start to bring forward creative service um, more bounteously. So a couple more things. Uh, just to kind of wrap that up, Richard talks about loving our enemies. And I just feel that is so exactly what we're doing. And it's just the through line of, of where we've been for ages is how can we really turn our hearts towards the things that we really hate and don't like. And so we need to source our pain so that it does not source us. Because if I am not actually connecting to the difficulties and using it as a fuel source, then it is doing that to me and no wonder I get tired and I kind of loop in patterns of not really bringing my mission forward is because of all the places that pain and fear is draining us of our vital energy that this 14 is bringing us back into the fires inside of us ignite the fire connect with the capacity to to create something from nothing I love that part of this key. It's like, it's the pure alchemy of like, I'm sitting on the couch, I'm doing nothing. And out of nowhere, there's a song. Where does art come from? How does art just pop out of people? What's the muse in you that moves you from a state of just total bland nothing to making an action? to putting the brush on the canvas, to having the vision that you must then go forward and bring to manifestation. That is such an incredible realm of inquiry. And so I think that sourcing our art from the substance of exactly where we're at in our present moment state is more powerful than we may know. And I'm really working with that as a muse in my life. So I want to finish this all with uh, one more piece that I received from Shiloh Boss, Boss Lady. If y'all don't know Shiloh, she's been around, <laughs> she's been around. She has uh, been a part of the Gene Keys community since before the Gene Keys community and carries such a 
pristine intelligence and embodiment of the wisdom. And we were talking about grace the other day. And Shiloh was, fe- was reporting that she feels grace like a substance, like the primordial eminence, emanation, uh, essence of grace, like actually moving in and wanting to inhabit the body and come in and, and live inside of us. And it, it's saying, make way. Make way for grace. I'm coming to inhabit your vessel. Whoa. So when we're talking about this alchemy of using our fuel and igniting our fires and and converting the dense substance of our shadows into creative action, we're not just transmuting and, and creating energy. We're also creating space inside of our being, we're clearing space for grace. So that takes it to a whole new level of beauty to me, (laughs) to bring in grace like that. And it really helps with the difficult journey of how to navigate through all the stuff in this reality. Grace is with us. And it's working through every step of this process. So may the grace be with you. And sending a lot of love from this vessel to yours and acknowledging the great work that you're doing. Thanks for showing up. Blessings.